Hello! Linny is rerunning in version 4.6 alongside Arlecchino. Let's talk about him. Who is Linny? Linny is an attack scaling pyro charge attack bow character. He does charged attacks. His charge attacks generate Grin, Malkin, Hats, which generate prop surplus. And all of these things do additional damage when the enemy has a pyro aura. What the f is a Grin, Malkin, Hat? Linny's level two charged attack fires a prop arrow, which creates a Grin Malkin hat. The Grin Malkin hat is also generated by his elemental burst. When a Grin Malkin hat is spawned, any existing hats on the field will detonate, creating a pyrotechnic strike, generating one stack of prop surplus. What is prop surplus? Prop surplus is the little number you see next to him in gameplay. It just means how many charged attacks you fired off, plus the burst. It's extra damage on his elemental skill, and it makes him heal more. Or it heals him when you use his elemental skill. Linny does have a passive that grants him 60 to 100% pyro damage bonus for hitting enemies with a pyro aura. While this is a massive buff, and does go a long way to make mono pyro teams better. Ultimately, the mono pyro teams kind of fall short of even vaporizer overload teams. Note, the overload teams should maintain a pyro aura, and we will talk about that when we get to them, but the fact is, don't be so fixated on mono pyro. Farina vape teams and Chevra's overload teams are incredible and can perform just as well and generally better. Are there any better list teams? No. I'm sorry, get in the circle. Get in the circle! Okay, we're gonna talk about weapons. I'm sorry, you, you can come out of the circle. It's okay, come, come here. All right, the first great magic. This is a 608 base stack weapon, 16 charge attack damage percent, 32 to 48 attack percent, and it also gives movement speed. And it's a crit damage main stat. This is Linnea's best in slot five-star weapon. If you already have any of the other five-star weapons, the damage increase from it is fairly small, but it is still significant. If you do play Linnea, I do recommend getting the first gray magic. The runner-up five-star weapon is Aqua Simulacra, which has lower base attack. It gives 20 damage percent, which is technically more than the first gray magic, but you're missing out on 48 attack percent for 20 crit damage and four damage percent and a lower base. It is his second best in slot weapon despite what people may think attack is not a bad stat and not having 48 attack percent is a bit of a problem in terms of your damage the damage difference will be on the screen i will calc it in post but it also does give 20 hp percent so you die less if you lost your 50 50 got lucky on standard hey you got scout heart this weapon is surprisingly good the high base goes a fair bit and the crit rate can make building easier and the crit damage is just generally pretty good. Is it as good as some of the other weapons? No, it's not bad. Four star weapons I recommend using. There is Song of Stillness. This is craftable weapon in Fontaine. This is, despite what people will tell you, Linny's actual best free to play weapon. The problem with Prototype Crescent, the other craftable that people might be recommending, is enemies don't have heads. Most new enemies just straight up don't have heads. And it, when they do have heads, you are unlikely to even go for headshots. Just use Song of Stillness, please. Please just use Song of Stillness. We also need to talk about the limited banner exclusive four-star weapon, the Range Gauge, which I believe has only been on banner once, but this does outperform Song of Stillness with enough refines. The way this weapon works is as you get healed, you accumulate up to three stacks, using your elemental skill or burst caches out your stacks and gives you attack percent and damage percent worse than the other two weapons or about as good is amos's bow lost your 50 50 got lucky on standard this bow is okay if you buy the battle pass you might think about grabbing Scion of the Blazing Sun. I normally don't talk about weapons that I don't recommend using, but I want to mention Scion of the Blazing Sun because it can perform as well as Song of Stillness, Refine for Refine. It doesn't take billets, but it does take your battle pass, but it is a crit rate weapon, which is actually really useful for getting your build off the ground. When you are struggling to crit at all, Scion of the Blazing Sun can have your back, but you shouldn't be struggling to crit because your artifact set should be 
four piece Merso Sa Hunter. This is Lenny's best in slot artifact set. It beats out two piece, two piece by up to 18%. Even in Mono Pyro, you're looking at a 12 to 15% damage increase. The reasons people would recommend using two piece, two piece on Lenny is because the sets being available from the strong box can lead to statistically better substats overall, and they can be used to crit fish for extra damage. Ooh, exciting. His main stats are really simple, attack sans, pyro goblet, crit. You can use an EM sans for vape. You could also use an attack goblet in some Farina teams. I really wouldn't recommend it though. Constellations. C1, plus one grin, Malkin hat. Plus one grin, Malkin hat every 15 seconds. The damage gain from this constellation depends how many charge attacks you perform per rotation. The fewer charge attacks you do per rotation, the larger the damage increase is. It also front loads a lot of damage. Lenny C1 is overall action honestly really good c2 is crit damage it's up to 60 percent it starts at zero and it stacks by 20 every two seconds up to 60 because it takes 60 seconds to use your first charge attack you will always have at least 20 there's also animation time spent in his burst so by the time you're doing charge attacks you could feasibly have it starting at 40 or even maxed out depending if you have to dodge c3 is normal attack plus three talked about it before it's great talent levels are still great don't sleep on talent levels especially here constellation 4 20 percent pyro resistance shred whenever he fires a charged attack c5 burst talent levels c6 whenever you fire a prop arrow a extra pyrotechnic strike is generated that does 80 percent of the original damage of pyrotechnic strike so whenever you fire a charge shot you get an extra grin malkin hat explosion that does 80 percent of the original general rotation charge attack three or four times if you have a shield you can go for five make sure you also use his burst and skill at some point you ideally use the skill closer to the end of his field time because of how prop surplus works teams Despite Linny having a mono pyro passive, his best teams tend to not to be mono pyro, as I talked about before. This might be familiar to you if you watched our Arlecchino coverage. Important disclaimer about short rotations. While they might be strong on paper, there are serious downsides to running a damage profile, specifically being very tightly energy tuned energy economies, doing less total damage per rotation can feel underwhelming, even if you clear at the same speed overall. The Linny team that I honestly recommend the most is Farina Kazuha Bennett. It doesn't really matter if Alini or Farina vape. As long as Kazuha is swirling both elements, you'll be very happy. It doesn't really matter what you do. The damage is very similar. Other potentially very high DPS teams, Chevra's Fischl Bennett. Important note about this team. Chevra's burst is not optional. You need to summon Oz, use Chevra's burst, and then her holdy, and then you throw down your Bennett burst and do charge attacks on Lenny. Ideally, you do five, Good luck doing five, go for four or three. Be practical. It's very good damage if you can pull it off. The Chevra's Burst is not optional because you need to establish a Pyro Aura. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time using Lenny's passive. Do you want a shield? Try Chiori. Chiori is actually pretty cool. It is higher on paper DPS than Shang Ling in the same slot, and you get consistent rotations. In practice, you are pretty unlikely to notice the difference besides the extra Bennett uptime. But hey, it's pretty cool. Vape teams with a shield, you can always do Farina with Zhongli. Another Farina Vape team that I recommend personally, I'm a fan of using Shengling, Bennett, Farina. This team is more autonomous damage. You are less reliant on doing Linny's charge shots. It can be a lot more approachable and can yield much more consistent results. There is the standard Mono Pyro team. These teams have kind of fallen out of favor. They are still effective and can perform as well as the other options, but I did want to really highlight the Vape and the Overload teams because one, they're new, they're exciting, and they are more damage. Now that we got the information out of the way, I hope you know how to play Lenny, you know how to build Lenny. Let's talk about Lenny, for real, for real. Why is Lenny not meta? Lenny is theoretically one of the highest DPS characters in the game, but no one really plays him. And no one really wants to play him. Why? He's got serious gameplay issues, uh, specifically with being a charged attack bow character. The best teams for charged attack bow characters are shieldless, which create a lot of inconsistency because you have to not really stand still, but you have to essentially stand still for two seconds to fire a shot. And if you get interrupted, you've lost the shot. GG, minus damage. Charge deck bow gameplay is also just subjectively unengaging. 
I find it uninteresting and kind of boring. It doesn't really matter if you do damage. You, know, you can't make me play charge deck low gameplay. I'm sorry. And I'm sure a lot of the community feels the same way. While short rotations are high DPS, they are not exactly practical or reliable because the way that Abyss is constructed is a lot of chambers will either be one boss or they will be two waves. Sometimes we're getting Abysses with three waves, but you're going to play a grouper if there are three waves. Short rotations can fall short of clearing bosses in one or two rotations, depending on your investment, when other teams might successfully do that just by having higher total damage, as well as clearing waves in a Spiral Abyss. If you fall short of clearing a wave of enemies in one rotation, you're facing a lot more time loss than you would be if you were able to clear the wave in one rotation over a longer period of time. Chevra's teams can also have the aura management issues that I talked about, which is why you need to use Chevra's as burst. Generally, whenever people talk about theoretical linear damage, they talk about five charged attacks and every shot is a headshot with prototype crescent. Prototype Crescent isn't real. Enemies don't have heads. Don't craft this weapon. Please use Song of Stillness. It's actually good. Generally, whenever people talk about linear rotations, they also talk about five charge attacks. What's wrong with five charge attacks in a shieldless team? You tell me. Go try it. I'm waiting. All right, I'm glad you had fun with that. Awesome. Five charge attacks is a very doable in teams with a shield. The problem is most teams don't have shields and shielders are just not very good. <laughs> Healers have characters like Bennett, Xianyun, or Chevres, and shielders just, they have Zhongli, Toma, Layla, Kirara. These characters do not have the same buffs or even utility as the healers. It is a serious imbalance with how our defensive options are designed currently. And there is dramatic damage fall off if you decide you need a shielder. The other problem with Lenny as a whole is honestly not his fault. They're the reason Lenny is not seen as meta. Lenny isn't popular. Like it or not, general interest and popularity do determine how good people perceive a character as. Characters who have been lackluster for years have ridden by as meta because of their popularity or their status in the story. I would shout out Raiden and Venti for specific examples of this. But again, I did want to mention, Linny is theoretically very good. Linny is one of the best DPS characters in the game right now. If you want to pull for Linny, pull for him. Don't get too caught up in someone saying, oh my God, Linny is actually the best because it's unlikely to be true for a lot of accounts and a lot of players. That's why I think Lenny is mid. 